Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This week's video, we're going to be talking about TIG welding some 4130 chromoly tubing, mainly geared toward uh, the thicknesses used in uh, home-built aircraft, but same principles apply for any 4130 chromoly tubing. Tip number one, preheat is not needed for anything under 120 thousandths thick, but it sure won't hurt anything. You know, chromoly uh, gets strengthened and hardened by heating up and then quenching and so that being the case and also the fact that it's been gas welded for years successfully it, it, uh, it just kind of makes sense that you want to slow the cooling rate so tip number two is weld a little bit slower than you normally would don't try to get in and fly like you would maybe with uh, trying to not to discolor stainless steel just take it take it nice and slow and kind of sort of uh, do more like a like you would gas welding and things will go a little bit better. Tip number three along the same lines to slow the cooling rate don't weld where there's a breeze or a draft like don't weld near an open door where there's cold air blowing in it's gonna cool your weld down. Along those lines you know I got a got a metallurgical lesson when I was about 20 I had a high carbon steel German eye pocket knife that somebody had cut a uh, live wire with and it left a really really hard spot on the blade that just would not file, wouldn't sharpen, wouldn't do anything. Well that's a high carbon steel that hardens when it gets hot and cools quickly and it melted and cooled quickly and left a really hard, hard spot. So that leads me to tip number four, use high frequency to avoid those uh, arc strikes. An arc strike will be a hard place that will turn into a crack later on. Tip number five, use ER70S2 rod, not 4130 rod. You have a lot more success and the welds will be plenty strong on those joints using ER70S2. Also another another tip is uh, a Leatherman tool is like one of the handiest thing ever. Just keep that thing in your pocket the whole time you're welding it. You'll be snipping rod all the time. Tip number six, taper amperage very slowly when you stop to avoid a crater crack. Go nice and slow when you're welding and also when you stop just taper off that foot pedal. You always want to have a foot pedal when you're welding chromoly tubing. Taper off nice and slow. Tip number seven, pulse helps near edges and for gaps. Now I'm not talking about like you know three or four or ten pulses a second. I'm talking about 33 pulses a second or higher. Now the settings I used here on this uh, Dynasty 200 actually 33 right across the board. 33 pulses a second, 33 background, and 33 uh, peak pulse. Uh, that's all you got to remember is 33's will give you a good good starting point and what that does is it really helps you welding near an edge like this it keeps the heat from wicking over and melting off that edge and fingernailing it uh, you know completely melting it off and that pulse I know looks a lot slower than it is but that is the that's the shutter speed on the camera not being able to keep up with the uh, pulse frequency that's 33 pulses a second really hardly noticeable to the naked eye here it looks like maybe you know five pulses a second or something like that but 33 pulses a second really helps in welding near an edge and uh, and in some other situations that I'll show you here in just a second just confines the heat keeps it from spreading out and building up and saturating and then melting the corner off for a gap like that it really helps fill in gaps too now you shouldn't really have gaps like that you should work hard to eliminate gaps and get good fit ups but you know sometimes sometimes you have a gap so i'm not saying you should have a gap like that or it's okay to weld it i'm just saying uh... using pulse in the range of about thirty uh... pulses a second again i use thirty three here thirty three background current thirty three peak pulse really helps in limiting the uh... the heat input and keeping the heat confined and keeping it from wandering and, and building up so much that it you know keyholes out in an uncontrolled fashion. This just kind of keeps it under control a little bit for filling in a gap. Tip number eight, leave the last bit of weld in an easy to reach area. What I mean by that is when you're closing up something, when it has no place for the gases, the hot gases to escape, like both ends are sealed up, don't make the last little bit of weld in a hard to reach place like you wouldn't want to leave it here in the throat of that uh, of that joint you would want to leave it on the outside because gases will build up it'll get hot and just as soon as you close up you're tapering off it'll blow your puddle right out from expanding gases inside that tube so you know don't don't 
leave that last little weld in a hard to reach area. Leave it in an outside area like this. So if you have to get a grinder out and grind out some porosity or whatever, it's, it's not a nightmare to get to. Now any That goes for any welding, a sealed uh, type of an area. I do it a lot when there's press fits with machine fittings and, and things like that, and I always have to be concerned with letting it cool down. In fact, it's not a bad idea just to let it cool, walk away, go to another joint, come back and weld that last quarter inch really quickly. Tip number nine, if you can't see it good, you can't weld it good. So use a cheater or wear glasses. Uh, I, don't, I think this is, sounds obvious, but it's not obvious. I've trained a lot of people and we've gotten into you know several days of welding and things just aren't happening. And all, all it was was you know people weren't aware, they weren't seeing the puddle clearly. So when you got your head stuck in a fuselage like this, it's very hard if you wear bifocals to line up your bifocals in the right, you know, you got to see it. If you weld an 030 wall tubing, I mean, by the time, if you have, if it takes you five seconds to even see that the, you're getting a puddle, you, you already got a hole. So a cheater lens, also called the diopter or just reading glasses, go a long way. Don't be afraid to wear them. Tip number 10, always focus the arc on the thicker piece, especially when tack welding like this. You see the arc wants to jump over to that thin piece. That's just where it wants to go from electrical resistance and heat and physics and all that stuff. So focus the heat on the thicker piece, add some rod, let it wick over to the thinner piece, uh, and you'll, you'll be ahead of the game. On a joint like this, it's got a little sharp corners like that, you'll blow that corner off if you don't get it all joined together first. So, you know, get a tack wheel and join little intersections like that before you uh, get going too much and get too much heat in the joint. Just use a little bit of, peak, a little bit of heat, a little bit of foot pedal, on the amperage control, dab, dab until you get it all joined together and then you can fuse it all and, and uh, blend it all in and then when you weld it, it won't blow away because heat will conduct evenly. Tip number 11, cleaning makes a difference, but not the difference. All right, here's a good clean joint, clean down to bright metal. 4130 chromoly tubing often comes and you know, mostly you order in the normalized condition. It's got a mill scale coating on it, but it's not a heavy coating usually. It's not nothing, anything like a piece of boilerplate with a thick, thick mill, mill scale coating. It does weld better if it's cleaned off to bright metal. Much better. This joint was cleaned and it just flows really nicely at low heat. Clean metal always welds better. That's just a given across the board. However, you know, sometimes you might be called in to weld something that's already tacked up would be just pretty much impossible to take apart and clean. So now you're faced with the choice of, do I just, do I just walk away and, and uh, you know, tell this guy I don't weld dirty metal or, or uh, you know, how bad is it? Do you go ahead and weld it? Whatever. So sometimes on the 4130 chromoly tubing, there'll be times when you need to weld it and it's not clean down to shiny bright metal. Not the end of the world. It's just gonna weld a whole lot better if it is clean. See, that was a shiny bright metal, nice weld, same joint, almost the same identical joint, no cleaning at all. You watch the puddle here, it's maybe slightly more sluggish than with the uh, completely clean metal, but not bad still. It's still flowing, not a terrible amount of uh, oxide islands floating around in the puddle or anything, it's still, still going okay. Again, same exact joint, same exact thickness tubing, same exact diameter, everything. I set up two joints just to kind of demonstrate. You can still do a decent job if the, if the mill scale coating is not too awfully thick, and that is often the case with chromoly tubing. Tip number 12, use aluminum foil as an argon dam. You're going to find a lot of sharp angles. This is nothing compared to the way some of them are on a fuselage. And it's hard to get the electrode in there and hard to get good gas shielding and sometimes the shielding uh, get, creates some kind of vortex and you get porosity and everything. So a little heavy duty aluminum foil and a pony clamp or something, you can mash it up inside the, uh, the uh, crotch of those joints like that. It creates a little bit of a dam to trap argon. And then you don't have to use, you can come in it from the side like this, you don't have to use a, a so large a cup or extend your electrode out so far. It helps trap the argon just enough to get things started and get a little bit of weld in there. And then you can, uh, when, you're, when you're done with one side, just get a little bit. You can move the foil to the other side, wire brush everything off as clean as you can possibly get it, and move your foil to the other side for a dam as well. And then things will go a lot better than with no foil or no dam at all. 
just gives you an edge, just a little bit of an edge to, to trap that argon, and sometimes that's all you need. So it doesn't weld perfectly. There's a little bit of oxidation sometimes there, but no porosity, and, that, and, and you're okay with that. Let's see how that looks after coming off that area where we restarted. Not too bad. That is the 12 tips for TIG welding chromoly tubing. There's a whole lot more tips, but that's all we had time for today. So thanks for watching.